Good morning. Hello and welcome to day 31 of the Mindfulness Challenge. I hope you're doing well and everything is going in the right direction for you. It's been a long time now since we started this 30 days ago and it's really a pleasure for me to keep doing it. Every morning I get up and I, I really look forward to spending a few moments just talking to you, just trying to help you get your thoughts today where you are and what you're looking to do and, and, and how we can build this and we can cultivate this habit, the change in neuroplasticity for us to be able to have this self-compassion, a way of <coughs> excuse me, dealing with issues um, based on emotions or situations or anxiety and fear and all of these things. And, and, and what it boils down to for me, a lot of this is self-compassion. The ability to treat yourself in a way with loving kindness and not to continually beat yourself up in a way that is not conducive to your 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 development, your growth, your transformation, your learning, your love. We talked before about it's you know self-pity and fear and self-doubt and all of these things conjure up so many negative connotations from within and we do it to ourselves. <clears throat> Excuse me, we create this mental narrative of ourselves that you know we're really tough on ourselves and we keep putting ourselves down and 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 you know for me self-kindness or common um, uh, humanity are some ways where we can really recognize that we've made mistakes we've we've we feel pain that we yes we have fear we're in difficult situations but to sort of say to yourself but that's okay because so is everybody else so is lots of other people you know, somebody always says there's always somebody worse off than yourself. But, you know, in times when everything's on top and you can't think straight, you know, you start beating yourself up. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do this or I can't do that or, you know, or, or whatever the scenario is. And, you know, I want, for me, self-compassion is treating yourself the same way you would do as a friend who needed your help. Treating yourself as a friend who a, a real close friend who needed your help and you know I suppose the best analogy to use here would be can you imagine your friend uh, phoning you up and saying um, you know my husband is, my boyfriend's just walked up my husband's just left me and you know it's I found out that he's been seeing somebody else and you know it's it's been a tor torrid time for me would you turn around and say, well, to be perfectly honest, it's probably because you're getting on a bit now. You put a bit of weight on. You know, you're not as pretty as when he first met you. You're a bit boring, to be honest. Um, you know, the girl he's going out with now is, you know, 20 years younger than you. And, you know, your hair's turning grey and, you know, you don't look well. And, and to be honest, you know, over the last couple of weeks, you've been pretty shitty. You wouldn't do it. But that's what we do to ourselves. That's what we do to ourselves every time we get into a situation, a problem, or the mental narrative, the chatter. Um, you know, you wouldn't do it. You turn on and say, oh, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you okay? Is there anything I can do for you? What can I do to help? Why don't you come over and have a cup of coffee? Or <clears throat> let's get together and have a glass of wine and, and chew over everything. Everything will be fine because, you know, you've got your family and I'm around and, you know, we can all pull together. You know, he doesn't deserve you. That's what we would do. We wouldn't go the other way around. So why do we do it to ourselves? Why do we, why do we beat ourselves up in all of these ways? You know, <clears throat> self-criticism and self-compassion are, are north and south, really. They, they are, you know, two very um, different things. And what I want us to do really is think about, you know, fear versus truth. You know, self-compassion, ah, that's just being selfish, that's going to make me vulnerable. In fact, self-compassion is a, a very reliable source of inner strength that allows us to, to grow and, and to come over some of these, you know, long-term issues and situations and shadow moments that we talk about. You know, another fear, sort of self-compassion, um, is, is really being self-indulgent, really, isn't it? You know, it's, it's all of these things. Actually, it's the opposite, compassion is about this sort of long-term well-being, not short-term pleasure. You know, we really want to try over a period of time to help cultivate our inner selves, to get healthy and happy and, and, and have, eat well, drink less, exercise more, 
you know um uh, i need to practice what i preach a bit there but you know self and you know, in another fear you, you think about oh yeah but self-compassion is 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 making excuses for my bad behavior no it's not it talks about the mistakes and how we can learn from them, how we can move forward, how self-compassion, you know, has the ability to, you know, um, build greater responsibility for our actions. And, and yeah, we can apologize if we do things wrong. We all do it. But, you know, it is about that. And, you know, another fear is self-criticism is, is, is an effective motivator. If I criticize myself, I can say, right, Julian, I'm going to get up today and I'm going to go for a five mile run. Can't because I've got a dodgy knee. But... It's not. Self-criticism tends to undermine our self-confidence and that leads to fear of failure. It also, you know, if, you're, if we're self-compassionate, we can motivate ourselves to reach our goals, not because we're inadequate, but actually because we're the opposite. We are adequate. We do love ourselves. We can reach our full potential. Um, self-compassion, you know, we can set high standards, but... <clears throat> don't beat yourself up when you don't reach them. Just think about how you're going to gradually get there day after day. And, you know, self-compassion, if you like, is like is like a good coach with kindness, support, understanding, and not harsh criticism of yourself. You know, if things don't go right or things are not working out for you. You know, we know life can be hard, but be kind to yourself. If you have pain in your life, you know, just sit, breathe, and put it, hold it with loving kindness. You know, it, fully accept um, the reality that we're imperfect. We're human beings. We're prone to making mistakes and we're prone to getting things wrong and having struggles and our hearts will be broken. But that's okay. You know, we need to practice imperfection. We're all right. Um, we become a better person by understanding our limitations and how we can work with them. You know, imagine if you if you wrote a letter to yourself, you know, and as a, as, as a compassionate voice, you know, and, and thinking about, you know, how you could help motivate yourself and, and do some of the changes. Write a letter to you as your friend and see what see what you do. Think of, you know, start with beloved friend, you know, who's struggling with some of the concerns that you have. Write a letter from compassion and write that letter to yourself. And and see what those words are and and see how they can soothe you and comfort you and help you through some you know difficult times because you know things can be hard but self-love and we're going to do a self-love meditation now is a powerful practice that can ease this self-destructive race in mind by drawing our attention to our innermost self and we find this beautiful uh, source of inner peace and acceptance. And no stressful thoughts or those thoughts of beating ourselves up will gently diminish. And we gain the peace that we require to move forward with clarity, purpose and grace. And that's something beautiful. So <clears throat> what I want you to do is, we're gonna put something up, a picture up now. I want you to close your eyes. And I, if we don't allow natural love for ourselves to be expressed, then love does not re reveal its beauty. It's very often, you know, struggling. We're very often not thoughtful for ourselves each day of our lives. So I want you to get into a nice, relaxing position and, and just take away any of the distractions for the duration of this moment. Um, and make sure that you're not going to be disturbed. And as you close your eyes, you're just feeling now again, you're settling in and you're feeling the, your breath. And take the very first action in self-love right now. And that is your ability to breathe at will in all kinds of situations and in all kinds of ways. Our breath has been with us literally our entire lives. And it's changed as we as needed. It in the demand of exciting circumstances or exercise or stress. But it flows effortlessly when we're resting. Now I want you to take 
a multiple of full and deep breaths every day. And we know by doing this it's proven to change our bodies and our minds for the better. Now I want us as always to take five full and very deep breaths, but holding it for a moment at the top of the breath and then naturally exhaling. Okay? So number one, inhale a nice big breath. Expanding, expanding your belly and your lungs as much as you can. Hold it and then exhale gently with relief and compassion. Now I want you to, again to inhaling fresh oxygen. Take that beautiful deep breath which has supplied you know oxygen to your bloodstream and hold it, soak it in and exhale, exhale without any effort. Number three, inhaling fully and you feel so rejuvenated and invigorated by this breath and hold it and exhale easily. The fourth breath now as we inhale, noticing how our breathing comes naturally for you. Pause into, soak it all in and then exhale any tension, any worry, any stress, any situations around you. And five, inhaling fully in this act of self-love, pausing at that top of the breath and feel this beautiful love from within and then exhale into complete relaxation. Now let your breath flow at its own pace without any effort from you now. And by doing this, you're proving you are very capable of self-love. And deep breathing increases the supply of oxygen to your brain and it stimulates the uh, parasympathetic nervous system and it's referred to as the rest and digest system. By breathing deeply and often <clears throat> you're sort of commanding your body if you like to rest which relaxes and rejuvenates you. And in many ways, this is self-love in its simplest form that anybody can do any time of the day. So let's, let's honor our self-love by relaxing the mind even further. And notice now how your thoughts are rising in your mind one after the other. See them come and see them go. Some thoughts linger for some time and some thoughts only come for a split second. And if you can really focus, you will notice even smaller thoughts, such as describing the world around you or labeling the things in your surroundings. You let your hearing now become super alert and try to focus on some of the sounds around you. Maybe you can hear the sound of your own breath. Can you hear any nature nearby? Perhaps cars passing or just the sound of sound, focusing on one at a time. Now stop focusing on any sound in particular and just allow all the noises around you to come in equally. And when you hear them, they almost act as tiny waves of relaxation, calming your mind. Beautiful, well done. Your mind relaxes when you activate your sense of your senses and the senses around you on command. And let's use the power of your amazing visualization abilities to induce this wonderful feeling of self love. I want you to begin now to imagine in your mind's eye yourself full of this beautiful abundance of self-love. See yourself now choosing healthy foods, cooking at home, so you know all of the ingredients you're putting into your body. Vividly see yourself eating well. And when you eat well, you see yourself enjoying these moments and you feel the nutrition that these choices bring you. Imagine now you have a strong will 
a strong feeling to avoid any junk foods or unhealthy drinks. See yourself with great confidence, saying no to all of these things that don't serve you. You feel very proud. Um, you feel as if you're competing something here and eating things that are healthy. Eating healthy is now an essential component in your self-love plan. And another form of self-love is just observing your mental chatter. In order to have great self-love, you must expand the things you feel about yourself and challenge any negative thoughts as soon as they arrive. So you can hear yourself saying, when I fully love myself, I'm able to fully love others. Deciding to love myself is a wonderful agreement. Each day, I allow my love for myself to grow more and more. And I am worthy of love and honor. The joy that comes with it is special. I've decided to love myself unconditionally. No matter what happens, it feels wonderful. I deserve love and I deserve self-respect. I can feel my self-esteem growing and as it does, it grows along with my self-love. I love and I accept everything about myself. I completely and always will now love myself. Today, I love myself even more than yesterday. And truly loving myself is now going to become easy for me. Because I know the more I love myself, the better my mind, my body, my soul, and my entire health will be. I love every moment of my existence. Every part of me that makes me who I am is encompassed with love. I have unconditional love within me that overflows in abundance to those around me. I am love. I will always be love. Be love and then we can give love. Now I want you to take a deep fresh breath in and I want you to you breathe out just to feel the love for yourself. Take another deep breath in and hold it and at that moment understand that it's important and now going forward you have this self-love. And when you're ready I want you just to put your hand on your heart and say to yourself, I love you, Julian. I love you. I truly love myself so that I have the ability to love others and love everything around me from moment to moment, from breath to breath. Self-love and self-compassion is now my foundation to move forward in my life with balance, with love, with clarity, and with purpose. I love myself in a way that's gonna allow me to be my best self, to allow me to achieve the things that I've wanted to achieve. But if I don't achieve them, I know that I've given in my best shot, and I can only be as good as I can be but by cultivating and working with self-love, I truly know that I'm giving myself the best life, the best moment, the best me, which in turn allows me to help others in the best way possible. But it all starts with my love for myself. When you're ready, wiggle your fingers and come back into the room. Self-love is difficult. Because we just think, how can I love myself? I'm not perfect. How can I love myself? I know myself better than anybody. How can I love myself? You can. We make mistakes. We, we make wrong cho choices. We do the wrong things. 
You know, did I have to have a Chinese last night or could I have some healthy food? Should I have had a pizza last Thursday? Who knows? Maybe I shouldn't have had more than two bottles of beer last night. Self-love, just have that love for yourself. But don't beat yourself up when things go wrong or you fall off a bit. I say that, you know, our spiritual path, our life path has millions of steps. And just because you take two steps to the left doesn't mean you're on the wrong path. It just means you might have taken two steps the wrong way. We can come back. So love yourself. Be love before you can give love. Have a lovely Sunday. I hope day 31 uh, is, is good for you. God bless you. And, and stay with me. And as I said before, you know, let's share this. Let's help other people. So each one reach one. Please, if you can, copy and paste this link. Put it on your Facebook page and say, try this today. It'll make you better for tomorrow. God bless you. Be love and give love. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.